morning and happy Friday. It's Jen from Polk County Public Libraries here with this month's board game demo. So today I'm going to tell you a little bit about one of the games we have to check out in our board game collection called the Isle of Cats. So if you didn't know, we have over 40 board games you can check out. And this is one I haven't told you guys about before. This is actually one that I don't have at home, so I'm not as familiar with it but it is a really fun game, so I wanted to get it from the library, and I have played it a few times. Um, it is for one to four players. It can last around an hour to an hour and a half, so this is one of our longer, more difficult games. Um, they recommend it for ages eight and up, and if you know me, you know I love cats, so one thing I think is really fun about this game is on the inside of the box, it says cat setup. If you have a pet cat, you should place it here while playing the Isle of Cats. So I just thought that was a fun little thing they included with the box. So I've got it set up here for a two player game and we'll go through the rule book and hopefully this will help you play this game and not confuse you too much. <laughs> All right, so let me tell you a little bit about the story behind the game. City legends have always told of a fabulous island where a race of ancient, wise, fierce, and playful cats made their home. Recent scouts from Squall's End have revealed that it is real, but it is threatened by the approaching armies of Vesh Darkhand, who will stop at nothing to destroy the island and the rest of the world. Trees will burn and the ancient rocks will be broken, but there's a chance that these noble creatures will be saved. So, you are a citizen of Squall's End and are on a rescue mission to save as many cats as possible before Vesh arrives. You must explore the island, rescue cats, they're in this bag, gather ancient treasures and find a way to fit them all onto your boat before returning safely to Squall's End. As you explore the island, you'll rescue cats and discover treasure. Cats and treasure are represented by tiles of different shapes that you must carefully place on your boat. Try to keep families together, complete lessons, and leave enough room to place the next thing on your boat. But watch out, returning to Squall's End with a half-empty boat isn't going to look good. So, how to win. At the end of the game, you will earn points for each cat family you have. So a family is three or more touching cats of the same color. So there are five different color cats. There's red, orange, green, purple, and blue, and you do have this cat reference card. Um, it's also good if you're colorblind and you can't see the colors, all the cats have different tails, so you can tell them apart that way. Uh, you will also get points for your rare treasures, so rare treasures are in the bag, and any lessons you have completed, and those are in the cards. You will lose points for every visible rat on your boat, so each boat, I think, has, I think it has 19 rats. So you wanna make sure you cover up the spaces on your boat with rats. You don't wanna lose points for that. And any rooms on your boat that have not been filled. So we'll t I'll tell you about the rooms in, the, in a bit, but each boat has a certain number of rooms as well. And the player with the most points wins. All right, so we have all our components on the board. We have our cat figures here. There are six of each color. We have 85 cats, they're in the bag. We have 42 fish tokens. We have our common treasures and our rare treasures, which are in the bag. This is Vesh's boat. He's the bad guy who's coming that we're trying to beat. Um, we have our special cats, Oshix. There are six of those. We have our basket tokens, our boats, our island board, uh, a score pad, and our cards. All right, so I've already set all this up. You put the island and the boat in the center. Uh, you put the common treasure and the Oshaks out in front of the island. You put the discovery cards and the baskets out. Um, you put the rare treasure and cats in the bag. And then you get your boat. You put it orange cat side up and you get one basket to start. And I've also given everybody a cat reference card. And then you randomly decide who goes first. And beginning with that person, go around the table and have each player 
choose a color by taking their favorite cat figure from the supply. I'm going to choose a green and my invisible partner here is going to choose a purple. And you place, oh, you place it on the island in that order. All right, let's see. So yes, the boats. So each boat has seven rooms, 19 rats, and five colored treasure maps. This is where you'll be placing every cat you rescue and any treasure you find. So there are little icons on each little square and that determines what makes up a room. So this, all the ones with the parrot on it is the parrot room. There's the moon room. There's the apple room. Oh, right in the middle. <clears throat> oh, and the moon room is separated. So you still have to cut up all the moons covered up to get that room. You have the corn room here. And then this room doesn't have an, an icon. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven rooms. Let's see. So when you start placing tiles on your boat, you may find it difficult to remember where each room is. To help with this, you can use the different icons in the corner. So like I said, look in the corner for that little picture. And they all have walls separating them. And then the edge of the boat is the white line that outlines it. So you can't ever put anything outside the edge of the boat. So when you rescue a cat from the bag, befriend an Oshax, one of these six special cats, or collect treasure, you get a tile and you have to place it on your boat. If your boat gets full or the tile doesn't fit, you can't take it. So you can rotate and flip each tile to fit the way you want. So I could put it like this. I could put it like this. You can turn it around to make it fit. They can't overlap, so I couldn't put this on top of that. Only one per square and make sure they don't go out of the white edge lines. They have to be fully inside your boat and they have to line up with the square. So your first tile that you pick can go anywhere in your boat. You could put it on the, in the middle, you could put it on the edge. Then after that, every tile you lay has to touch another tile. Kind of like Scrabble if you play that. And then there are the five colored treasure maps. Once you cover those up with a cat, not a treasure, you unlock, um, you unlock treasures. Another important thing, you have to get the cat of that color to unlock. So you have to put a red cat on the red map, a blue cat on the blue map. If you don't, that's fine, but you don't get the treasure if you don't get the right color. All right, a day overview. The Isle of Cats is played over five days. During each day, the fields are filled with cats and players gather, filled with cats and players gather fish, explore the island, read lessons, rescue cats, and find rare treasures as they try to fit everything in their boats. All right, so the story. At last, there rising out of the mist are the mysterious headlands and treetops of the Isle of Cats. Hope fills the boats as their prows cut across the waters, but the threat to this precious sanctuary is still clear. You left behind the beat of Vesh's distant war drums. How long will it take the dark hand to arrive? So there are five days. So here's his boat. Once it gets to the end, that's the end of the game. Every day you rise before first light to read old smugglers accounts and scan ancient maps as you loudly debate the best spots to discover the island's rare and elusive beast. All right, so the cats. So the star player will draw tiles at random from this bag, placing two cat tiles per player in each of the fields. So if there are two players, the first player is going to draw eight cats, four per, four per field. So the fields are just either side of the island. All right, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's also rare treasure in this bag. Um, 
obviously it looks different from cats, so you'll know um, when you draw a treasure. If you draw the treasure that doesn't count as one of the eight, you're going to put it in this pile with the other common treasures and keep drawing until you get eight cats. All right, so in phase one, you go fishing. With today's territory picked, the first job of the day is to hurry to grab your fishing nets and lines. You are going to need an awful lot of fish if you want to lure the cats out of hiding. So each player gets 20 fish to start the day. So there are this token is worth five fish. And then if you need to make change, there are tokens worth one fish. So each player starts the day with 20 fish or four, five fish tokens. In phase two, you explore. Stepping as silently as you can through fragrant grasses and beside ancient ruins, you see many a strange sight. Grottoes, eldritch waymarkers, forest, old smuggler troves, old buildings, and poachers' hides. Occasionally, you might even see a tail disappearing into the undergrowth. So the explorer phase is split into two parts. Selecting discoveries, where you choose cards you may want to use, and accessing discoveries, where you choose and pay for any selected cards you wish to keep. So selecting, selecting discoveries, the starting player is going to take the discovery deck of cards and deal seven cards face down to each player. Another thing I want to mention that I haven't said is there is a solo way to play this game. So if you don't have any friends or family that like to play board games, you can play this one by yourself. I won't explain that, but you can find other videos online or read the directions after you check it out. All right, so you have seven cards. You're going to look at them, and you're going to pick two you want to keep. Place them face down, and then you're going to pass them to your left. So if there's just two people, you're passing them back and forth. If there's more than two, it's going to go in a circle. You pick two more, pass them, two more, pass them, and then you're left with one. So you still will end up with seven cards. <clears throat> um, so if you are playing with three or four people, um, you'll rotate which way you pass your cards just to... Um, make it more random. So on days one, three, and five, you're going to pass to the left. On days two and four, you're going to pass to the right. But when there's only two people, it doesn't matter. All right, so that was selecting discoveries. Now we're going to access them. Even when you manage to find some new, old, or ancient object half hidden in the undergrowth, there's another problem. The feline locals have lived here a long time and are unwilling to let their secrets go so easily you're going to need to use your fish to distract them. All right, so you have your seven cards and you need to decide which one ones you are going to keep. In the top uh, left corner, there is a cost. So the, my cards have zero, one, and two. So that's how many fish it costs to buy them. So you might not be able to afford all the cards you want. You have to strategically think about which cards that you want to play. Uh, so when you select the cards you want to play, you're going to pay that number of fish. And whatever cards you didn't buy, you're going to put in a discard pile next to the deck. And you're going to put them face down so that the other people don't see what you didn't keep. <clears throat> card there. Let's see. I'll keep that one. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we're going to read. Let's see. Okay, so I have to pay my six for the cards I chose to keep, make my change, keep some fish. All right, then you're going to read your lessons. So lesson cards are always blue. 
I actually don't have any lesson cards in my pile. So sometimes you won't have any. Um, I will read one just to give you guys an idea. All right. So this is an archaeologist lesson card. All players get five points per treasure map they have not covered. And that is a public lesson. So you read it out loud and you put it out. And then at the end of the game, each person will get five points for each treasure map they have not covered. So that kind of helps people in the ends that might be getting negative points um, for not covering up their whole boat. All right, next you rescue cats. The rescue cards are always green. So I, I like to rescue the cat, so I kept quite a few green cards. <clears throat> so there are two things on the card. The top is the basket, and the bottom is the boots. So at the start of the rescue phase, players in turn order choose which rescue cards they wish to play and place them face down in front of their boat. Once all players have chosen, they turn them over at the same time. So the speed is the boot number. So I have a total of eight. And then these are half baskets. You can see they're kind of torn. So added together, that adds up to just two baskets. So two baskets and eight and a speed of eight. All right, so whoever has the fastest speed gets to go first. So I was green, we'll say I have the fastest speed, so I'm gonna place myself at the top of the island. And this changes the turn order for the rest of this day. So if you were last and you got a really high speed, now you get to go first. <clears throat> All right, so beginning with the start player, each player takes turns to rescue cats until everyone passes. You may only rescue one cat each turn, but you may have as many turns as you want until you either run out of fish, baskets, cats, or decide to pass. <clears throat> to rescue a cat, you must have a basket and enough fish to lure the cat in. Cats to the field to the left need three fish. There's a three right there. Cats to the field to the right need five fish. So that's another thing you have to keep in mind when you're buying these cards. You have to save the fish to actually get the cats that you want. Uh, so you don't want to spend all of your fish to buy the cards. All right, when you rescue a cat, you spend the re required fish, place them, in the uh, place them in the supply pile, and use a basket. All right, so I have my permanent basket here, and I have two, four broken baskets, which makes two temporary baskets. So I can only rescue uh, three cats this round. <clears throat> so for my turn, I would say, let's see. Uh, I like I like this side of the cats because they're cheaper. But when the as the game goes on and you're filling your board up and you want a certain color, you might want to buy the more expensive cats. Um, to get the color you need. So I'm going to pay my three fish and use one of my baskets to get this purple cat here. And then the other person will go. Um, I have another basket. I'm going to get the blue cat that is three fish. Pay my five, get two and change. And then I can use for the day, you just flip over your permanent basket to the gray side. And I'll get one more. Actually, I'll go get this blue fish. Remember, you're trying to make families. So you're trying to keep all the colors together. You want all the, all the blue cats together, all the purple cats together, all the orange cats together, etc. Um, so there are also, after you've rescued the cats, you might have some rare finds. <clears throat> so these are brown or yellow cards. Uh, if you have a yellow card, you get to take some treasure. You can take a rare treasure from here if that has been pulled out of the bag, or you can take a common treasure for this card. Um, 
These can be used to take up spaces that you've uh, left open because remember you don't want uh, you want full rooms. So like here I have two little rats in the corner. So I might want to take one of these little treasures to cover that up. So this is kind of like a puzzle. You want all the puzzle pieces to fit together perfectly. So you fill up all the rooms. So you cover up all the rats. So you want to pick the sh treasure that is shaped the way you need it to be to fill up your ship. Um, there are also brown cards in here. So if you get a brown card, you get to take um, one of the special cats, the Ushaks. <clears throat> and they are friendly creatures and like to belong to a family. So you take the cat figure that represents your chosen family and place it on the tile. So if I wanted him to be a purple cat, I put that there to represent he's joining the purple family. All right, then you empty the fields. So any cats that weren't rescued, um, they're gone for the game. You put them back in the box, not the bag. <clears throat> um, any treasures will stay out. You're going to move the boat because we've spent a day now. Um, once the boat gets to the hand, that means Vesh has arrived and we're going to do the scoring. Otherwise, you're going to flip your permanent basket back over and start the next day. <clears throat> so if you have any cards in your hand that you didn't play, you do get to keep those. You've already paid for them the previous day, so you get to keep them. <clears throat> um, any fish, you get to carry over to the next day, so you can... You get 20 fish a day, but if you don't spend them all, you get to use those the next day. Uh, then there are um, Anytime cards. Those are purple, which I had one of those. It says draw two cards. They can be played anytime during a day. So anytime you decide to play that purple card, go right ahead. Um, just declare that you're playing a card and fully resolve it before any other actions are performed. All right, so we go through that whole process for five days five times now it gets to the end and we're going to score all right so like i said rats are negative one if there are any rats that aren't covered up on your boat it's negative one points per rat so you have seven rooms it's negative five points for each room that has a visible square in it uh, then you get points for each cat family so those are cats of the same color that are touching, and the number of points depends on how many cats are in the family. The more cats in the family, the more points. Uh, you get three points for every rare treasure on your boat, so the rare ones are the ones that came out of the bag. They look a little bit different. <clears throat> you don't get any points for these common treasures, just the rare ones. And then you might have drawn lesson cards, like we talked about that public lesson. You're going to look at those. You're going to add up the points from those. Um, both your private lesson cards and the public lesson cards and see who won. If there is a tie, the player with the most fish wins. They remember their cats might want a snack on the way home. All right, and that is how to play in the Isle of Cats. I know this is a longer video, one of our more complicated games, and I do want to let you know that the company that makes this game also explains the game on their website, and I bet they do it even better than I do. So if you're still a little confused, I would recommend going to thecityofkings.com slash the Isle of Cats to watch their video. So I hope you guys check this out and really enjoy the Isle of Cats.